I wanted to go over the layering system in Canva. It works very similar to other programs like Photoshop and Illustrator. There's different elements, photos, and text, and they all exist on different layers on the canvas. So let's go ahead and drag in a couple of elements and show you how this works. So I'm going to drag in a couple of text elements, just two different elements, a heading, and let's drag in a subheading, and I'm going to drag in a couple of elements. So let's do shape. Let's get a different colored box shape. Let's do green, make it a little bit smaller. And let's also grab a photo just to have a little bit of everything. Let's grab this photo, we'll make it a little bit smaller. So we have all these different elements and they all exist in different layers. And so I have this as the bottom layer, or actually it's not quite the bottom layer. But let's say I want this as our background color. I want to send this all the way to the back layer so all the other elements are up front. So how we do this is we go up to Arrange and we just send back. And so you can send different layers forward and backwards to try to get the right layering. So that's now officially my background shape. Of course I can move this and shift this however I'd like. So now this is in the forefront and I can make this white and make it a little bit larger. Let's do that real quick. Ooh, that might have been too large. No problem. We'll just have one line. So now we have our heading, and now right now, this top smaller subheading is above it. So uh, we can adjust that as well. And this photo, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Right now, this is the topmost layer. It's covering up our other layers. But I want this to be along with the green in the background. So let's send that back. And just keep pressing it until you find out where in the layering system you want it. So right about here. So now you're starting to see all these layers come together and work together. So I can also add new shapes on top of here, add angles, crop it, make this bigger. And that's just a simple way of how the layering system works. I'm back in the Canva home screen and I wanted to show you how to use some of their pre-made templates. So let's go ahead and create a quick flyer. So I'm right here at create a design. I'm going to go ahead and expand it so you can kind of see the wide variety of different options you have. So let's click on poster. We're going to go ahead and load that in. And there's a lot of really decent layouts that they have. I like to customize all of them to make them unique and make them um, my own. So let's go ahead and scroll down, see if there's a basic uh, layout that's going to fit the amount of text I have, the kind of impact that I want to make to the viewer when looking at my design. Um, let's do something simple. Let's do this to see how this one works. And it'll already automatically load it whenever you see a dollar sign. That means it's a premium one where you have to purchase, um, for example, the photo. But you can always swap out the photo with something different. So why don't we do that? You don't have to purchase photos within Canva. I like to use free photography from the Pexels website I showed earlier. So let's go ahead and bring in, let's see, do I have anything high fashion already loaded on here? Let's go ahead and try this. So I can move this over. And you can see all these different layers. Um, we just went over the layering system. So right now this text is all above the photo. The photo is in the background. If that was, uh, we could also send this to the back. I don't know why you would want to do that. But if it would, this photo was already on the top. So let's arrange, bring it forward. And it covered up your elements. Just select your photo and send it backward. So I like to uh, customize. A lot of this stuff, depending on the photo we want to use. Making that just, I'm just double clicking and editing the text a little bit to make it my own and to make it work. And we could work with that a little bit. I can actually go up to filter and use some of the filters that we went over earlier to make sure the photo is not as strong. See how the contrast. Let me actually reduce the contrast a little bit. It'll help my white text pop out. 
Had a little bit of a vignette. And let's see what happens if we do a tint and reduce the saturation. That could be kind of cool. Reduce the contrast. And let's play around with the brightness. And so you can see how we're already changing the layout. We can add our own text on here, obviously. Maybe change some of the type. We can move it around a little bit. But you can see how it's already different from what they originally had. And that's good. You, you always want to do your own thing. So I'd probably pick um, a different photo. I can actually delete this 2008. If there's an element you don't lead, need, just delete it. And we could drag in another photo of ours. And let's go ahead and grab a, and this is kind of using ev everything we just went over in the last 20 minutes. Go to elements, we're gonna get a frame, and let's get a couple of, I guess we could do a circle. We can go like this, make it a little bit smaller. I don't know if a circle is quite fitting with that design. Let's see if I can find just your typical square shape. Here, I like this. This is a really different shape. It's got some rounded corners. Delete that element. And notice this is the topmost layer, but it's not going to overlay any other objects, so it's not going to bother me at this moment. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I can actually, uh, I'd like three of these across the top. I'm going to group, I've just selected all of these and I'm going to group them. Then I'm able to move all these around as one unit, which is very handy. I'm going to go over to my uploads and drag a few photos in. I may not have the right photos for this particular ad, but we're just going to go ahead and drag them in anyway. Ooh, that's kind of neat, but I don't want to, I want to drag it over to this layer. So we're going to have to ungroup and now let's see if it'll let me drag it into the individual layer. There we go. That's the trick. Could change my cropping. So I'm zooming in a little bit more on her face. I'm going to drag this woman in here, double click, make it a little bit bigger so I can crop, zoom in a little bit more on her face, and let's try to see if we can find one more. Here we go. Double click, zooming in on the face, clicking OK. And so I can select all these as one unit again and group them, and now I can kind of play around with lots of options in terms of our photos. Let's go back to how it was. I kind of like it straight. Let's drag our other photo. Somehow it got replaced. And what's great is if you do, um, you load in a, uh, an object from or a frame and you load in a photo and you already did some filter effects on it you can actually drag in another photo and it's going to automatically apply, apply the same filter effects which saves a lot of time so i don't have to re-edit all that and do the purple effect it automatically did it for me even with a new photo just like that so, you know, I'll have to work on photography a little bit and get what I want. But you can see how we whipped that up very, very quickly. We're able to have multiple images. We changed a preset template. It doesn't look anything like it did before, but it's, it's giving us what we need to do a proper ad layout.